Hello and welcome to my video of Football Manager 2014. Um, in this particular video I'm going to start a career off uh, with a lower league side um, which will hopefully, well hopefully you will find it mildly more interesting than a uh, flossing your teeth with a bandsaw but I'm going to give it a go. Um, we're going to see how it goes. Um, now my name is Nick, as you could probably see from this screen right here. Um, I am indeed born from Nottingham. I am in fact not uh, half Polish though. Um, that just happens to be my general setting because I manage a lot of teams in Poland when I can actually put up with FM14 bullshit. Now, FM14 is probably my least favourite football manager so far. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, I genuinely think it's probably got the worst match engine I've ever experienced in my life when it comes to management games maybe withstanding FM10. Um, but anyway, nothing will ever match up to Football Manager 2011 in my eyes anyway, so it's a bit of a lost cause in terms of uh, Sports Interactive's um, aspirations. But anyway, um, as I said, we're going to crack on with this. Uh, as you can see, my favourite team is Boston United. They are the team I support. However, we won't be playing with them at all. So, let's crack on and see what we can do. Uh, the team I'm actually going to play as are in step 8 of the English Footballing Pyramid and they are in fact um, a team from my hometown of Nottingham. Well, I say hometown, my birth town if you if you so desire. Um, Carlton Town. Um, our nickname is the Millers. I do have a, well, I do have a slight affiliation with the team you could say. Um, now the fact that it says predicted to finish 12th does a bit of a misservice because uh, we did finish 9th last season, or did we finish 10th? It's one of the two, 9th or 10th. Uh, we did have a bit of a good start to the season, but unfortunately tailed off um, around Christmas and never really discovered a consistent run of form throughout the remainder of the season, which was uh, a little bit disappointing. But hopefully we can uh, go some way to improving the team's reputation, at least in a fantasy level on Football Manager. So. Let's have a look into it then. So, as you can see, our reputation is probably obscure, mainly due to the fact that we're located in a very small part of Nottingham called Carlton. Funnily enough, you'd never guess that, would you? Uh, but anyway, yeah. Bill Stoke Old Stadium is the name of our ground. Um, that is named after the old chairman and also president of the club, who did sadly pass away um, a long time before my affiliation with the club, but he still deserves a hell of a lot of respect for everything he did. Um, across the Nottinghamshire football scene um, and yeah that was uh, the ground was renamed um, in his honour basically previously it was known as simply as Stoke Lane which is obviously the lane uh, that you will find the ground on so anyway let's crack on with this and we'll uh, start the game up properly we'll just save it if you bear with me one second as you can see I have quite a lot of saves there um, no idea why I've got a fake num save. Don't ask who Huntley are because it would take me a long time to explain my affiliation. Well, I actually don't have an affiliation with them, but as to why I've managed them, let's say. So, just bear with me two seconds while we get this started and saved. My laptop isn't quite as powerful as it once was, sadly, due to uh, the progression of technology over the years since I first bought it. Now, um, just a little bit of a background on the club then. Um, the manager is Les McJanet, a former fullback for Darlington, Mansfield Town and Boston United. Um, he is a Scottish bloke, he's from Kilmarnock, he actually supports Kilmarnock I believe as well. Um, but he's lived in Nottinghamshire for the vast majority of his life, um, I believe anyway from what I've, what I've uh, spoken to him about. Um, he's managed Glapwell in the past, uh, he's also ma managed Sutton Town in the past and obviously Carlton here. There are of course other teams that he's um, played around with and had a hand in, um, but I won't go too much into depth of that. Now, the chairman is Mick Garton. Mick, Mick is uh, the owner of the quite well spread um, MSR news group. You may have seen quite a few of their shops around in the East Midlands and uh, around Lincolnshire and Nottinghamshire in particular. Um, he is the owner of the club, he took over from um, Bill after, after he sadly passed away um, and you can't really knock his contribution to the club at all, he's put, uh, he's put his hand right in his pocket and he's really dragged this club up. If you consider where Carlton were 10 years ago and now you consider where they are now, uh, it's been an absolutely fantastic rise, so obviously top marks to Mick there. Um, now. 
I do actually, sadly enough, I do actually attend these meetings at the start of the game. So let's crack on with that. I'll just go buzz through it because I know all the answers to this anyway. Let's be honest with you. Um, so bear me two seconds. As you can see, not really much of a budget, but uh, we'll see what we can do actually in pushing the boundaries on that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully Mick is kind to me. I don't like managing with philosophies involved because it adds extra pressure. Um, yes, we'll meet some journalists. And here's Ian McCulloch. Uh, quite a legend, actually, uh, for Notts County. He was, uh, he pl well, he's actually played in quite a few positions, but he was mainly known as a winger. Um, a real top player. He played in, this, in the, uh, the same side that Jimmy Cyril managed. Um, and obviously went on to quite a lot of success, considering the stature of Notts County generally as a football club. He, he was part of the team that really did um, go on and do great things for that standard of club. Not that I'm knocking Notts County, I do fully respect them, um, but that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. Not all Nottinghamshire clubs can match Forest, let's be honest. But anyway, let's crack on and we'll uh, see what he has to say. So team reporters are always handy it's probably good to meet the backroom staff uh, which will be quite interesting when you see who the scout is so when it comes to taking tasks on at a club I like to give my assistant manager um, full roaming over the friendlies because I'll be honest with you I'm not someone who's big on the friendlies I like to get stuck in when the season actually begins um, so we'll get Ian to take full care of that and also the reserve in youth teams which I believe in real life Ian will have a hand in um, as well so we'll leave him in touch there uh, we'll also get him using the same tactics that I decide to employ with the first team and that'll do for now um, okay now season expectations I reckon we'll finish top half even if I am pretty shocking at full manager uh, for 2014, but never mind. Let's meet the staff. We'll scout all of these. You've probably already noticed what I'm going to get onto in a second, but we'll ignore it for now. Uh, we'll go. F I'll ignore formations for now. We'll touch on that maybe in a different video. We might even fit it into this one. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna have a look at these actually. The thing is with Carlton, we do lack strong central midfielders. Now, anyway, as you can see, Chief Scout Upton. You're already probably thinking, what the fuck is going on here? It is actually me. Um, they have got my birthday wrong. So, Sports Interactive, if you want to uh, address that, I mean, you can you can contact me if you like. I mean, it's only my birthday, but uh, that could, that could be quite important to me, you know. I do I do I do enjoy my birthdays, but uh anyway. I am born in March, but they've got the day wrong, sadly. Um media handling style, I wouldn't say I'm that volatile. I like to make my point, but I'm not volatile. I think that's a bit harsh, Miles you prick. Um my preferred formation is not four four two. I do like to press. I'm not very cautious. I am direct and marking style mixed. Well, that's not very specific, is it? But anyway, let's go back onto uh, the main screen. So, um, as we're going to start here, we're going to have a look at the team, uh, the teams we're going to be facing over the season ahead. So we've got Bedworth um, from Warwickshire. You've got Belper, uh, Derbyshire, Brig around Lincolnshire, Carlton, of course, Nottinghamshire, Chase Town. Are actually not far from me in Stafford. Um, they're actually based just outside of Cannock, um, outside, well, around Cannock Chase actually, which is where Chase Town comes from. Uh, Colville, Leicestershire, Eastwood, who have sadly gone out, um, dropped out of business. I do believe they've actually reformed the club though at a lower level in the not senior league, so best of luck to them. Um, Gaul, who on my list of scouting duties last season I realised we're quite an expensive club to get to uh, and therefore didn't actually go I relieved myself of my duties for that particular game but uh, next season we may we may as well go there uh, it's one of the few grounds in the league I haven't actually been to yet um, Gresley uh, uh, I believe are around Derbyshire um, Hales Owen are not too far from Birmingham in fact you could probably have an argument that they're in and around Birmingham to be honest Kidsgrove again isn't too far away from me it's um, just outside of Stoke Leek 
um, well, Leek is one of these really annoying towns that are actually in the middle of nowhere. And if you have, to, if you want to go there and not catch a bus, well, actually, you still have to catch a bus on this route actually. But if you want to get to Leek, um, essentially, what I would have to do uh, is either go to Stoke and catch a bus, which is a big no because, well, because Stoke really. Um, but you can also get up to Macclesfield and catch a bus from there, which is a massive faff. Let's be honest. Um, Lincoln United pretty much speaks for itself. Lincolnshire, Loughborough Dynamo in Leicestershire, Market Drayton, um, on to, and again not too far away from me thinking about it. Mickleover, Derbyshire, Newcastle. Um, Newcastle is arguably part of Stoke on Trent. Uh, Renneth Miners Welfare just outside of Mansfield. Romulus and Sutton Coalfield share the same ground. Scarborough play at Bridlington, but Yorkshire, uh, Sheffield. Sadly, Yorkshire again. Um, so, um, out of the, out of these teams, uh, the strongest, without doubt, you're looking at Hales Owen. Um, who else have we got in there? So Hales Owen are probably the strongest ones, to be fair. Uh, Scarborough will be up there. Sutton Coldfield had a good seat, had an all right season last season, but tailed off. Colville like to score hatfuls. Um, so there's quite a, there's a there's a there's a decent amount of teams there that can cause problems, but uh, in theory. We should be doing. Uh, we should be around the playoff places, and hopefully in real life we will also be around those playoff places as well. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the actual squad then. Martin Kearney in real life was actually out for the vast majority of the season with an injury, um, which unfortunately kept him right out, as I said, for the entire season, just about. Um, but uh, that was where John Viscosi came in. Funnily enough, the next player down, um, former Mansfield youth and trainee I believe he was there for a couple of years um, he, very very good goalkeeper You can't, I can't knock him one bit to be fair the games I saw him play and he was absolutely fantastic um, brilliant reflexes he's a fantastic shot stopper does the simple stuff very well as you always want for your goalkeeper anyway um, you <laughs> can't knock him what can you say but I mean actually very nearly signed for St Mirren um, towards the end of last season but due to the fact he'd already played for two clubs in England the um, Scottish FA actually rejected his move so they didn't allow it to go through um, thus he stayed with Carlton until the end of the season um, and played a big part in us actually um, winning the Not Senior Cup which was obviously a big moment for me with a trophy of my first season at the club as well Rob Darkin is another player like Martin Kearney who was out for the vast majority of the season. I've never actually met Rob, but uh, I've heard good things about him. So I'm looking forward to seeing him play next year in the games that I can actually get to when I'm not scouting. Um, Callum Keane, um, another ex-Mansfield player, I believe. If we have a look into into his history, I believe he's ex-Mansfield. Or maybe not, maybe I'm just blabbing absolute bollocks. But he's former Buxton, another team I do actually res uh, respect, and he is also ex-Derby as well, which is a bit of a problem, but we can uh, let him off now he's come to Nottinghamshire. Uh, Corey Nightingale, another player who was out for a vast majority of last season. As you can see, we were very disrupted with injuries throughout the year. Um, Josh Thornton, very versatile player. He's filled in all over the place over the course of the last season. Grant Brindley, uh, brilliant bloke to be fair um, I've had a chat with him a few times um, in and around the club um, sadly retired towards the end of the season due to work commitments so uh, all the best to you Brenners um, Lee Tor was voted fans player of the season last at the end of the uh, season uh, pl put in some brilliant performances to be fair and even um, rounded off a good win over Baseford in the not senior cup um, with a very late goal actually um, and put in some absolutely brilliant performances at the back. Probably one of my favourite players for the for the season as well. Markel Bailey, I've not really seen much of him. Um, he was, I think, by his own start, by his own uh, admission, he might uh, say that he was a little bit inconsistent. But when he played well, he was, you know, he was top draw at points. Martin Ball is club captain. Um, another excellent, well, I say another excellent player. He was probably the most instrumental at what I put at times during the season, which is what you want from your captain, really. Um, from what I was told bef just when I joined the club, he is um, he is more of a central midfielder, but he more than capably filled in at centre half. In fact, I think he warmed to the position a little bit, to be honest, because he really did set the back four alight at times. Him and Brindley at the back were fantastic for long periods throughout the season. Uh, Billy Bennett's another 
player, and one of a few young players who really did shine last season. I thought he was excellent in the games I saw. Um, a real good left foot. He's absolutely rapid as well down the wings, which is also helpful when getting up in support of the wingers. Uh, Jordan Willems, another player who signed from Mansfield. Um, very surprised, actually, that he was released. Um, I thought he had quite a promising career ahead of him, but uh, not to say he won't, of course, still. But um, yeah, I, th I think he could probably play at a higher level, to be honest. Not you know, like a few of the players could, to be fair. But... Um, yeah, certainly a player to look out for next season. He's actually um, signed a contract with us as well when he first joined because he was released by Mansfield while he was on loan to us. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to see how he develops next season. Julian Topless um, sadly missed a lot of the season. Um, I won't go into detail about it because it is quite a quite a touchy issue and I don't want to... Um, well, I just don't want to go into it, to be honest. It was quite a nasty thing that happened to him, and I wish him all the best on his recovery, and I hope to see him playing next season. Danny Elliott was, um, well, if I had to pick a player of the season, I'd probably go for Danny, because he was absolutely brilliant in the games I saw. Literally every single game, he had a, he had a presence within it. Um, a real all-action midfielder, gets box-to-box -box, uh, quite willingly, gets stuck in, can play a pass, does the simple things right as well. Um just a perfect centre midfielder for this level really um, Alex Troke um, filled in as captain a few times and I think as the season progressed he actually probably got a little bit better to be honest he, he's played centre half, he's played central midfield I think he's even played left midfield at some point and up front and also at right back so um, I've seen him play in many different positions he's not looked out of place in any of them so uh, yeah, top marks to Trokey. I think he's been fantastic that last season. Another one that could have been easily a, content, a contender for player of the season. Ruben Wiggins Thomas over the seasons has been an excellent um, goal scorer for for the Millers, but um, last season ugh, again, I don't really want to go into it because it's more of a private issue. But um, we'll skip on from Ruben actually. Um, Sam McVicker. Um, Again, another another player who really did shine. It, I mean, he's left he's left this season now um, for a job in London, I believe. So uh, all the best to him there. But he did pop up with some very, very good and important goals at times as well, especially in the cup final. The the equaliser that he got was absolutely brilliant. Um, so uh, he's uh, he's a dominant presence in the air as well. Um, real good target man and also a very good finisher on his day as well so um, yeah that's that's your lot by the looks of it for um, the first team let's see who they put in the under 21s I know literally nothing about Reese Neal Ben Flynn <laughs> again I'd actually say he was up for one of the players of the season I think he's been excellent I know his dad quite well I've been chatting to him throughout um, the games and at half time and all that kind of thing um, and I think he's been brilliant to be fair. One day we will get an interview with him. He's very he doesn't he's not keen on the idea, but we will catch him. Uh Joe Brothwell, another ex exciting player that plays on the wing as well. Absolutely bags of pace, a good quick feet, um very tricky on when cutting inside as well. Um I would imagine can also play up front with uh, reasonable comfort as well. So, that's the team sorted out. Um, and hopefully you understand a little bit more about them. Um, I'm sorry I can't go into too much detail because obviously I have to be uh, very careful of what I say as an employee of the club. But um, yeah, that's your lot for that bit. Um, in terms of tactics, I tell you what, let's do some building on tactics for now because obviously, as people who who will know me pretty well, they'll be fully aware that I'm not very strong on the tactical side when it comes to Football Manager 2014. Nothing I do seems to work. Everything seems to work on FM11 and FM12 and FM13. FM14, no, it just doesn't want to go for me. But anyway, let's see what we can do um, and hopefully we can find a system that will work for me. Um, before I actually get onto the tactics properly, I need to uh, put Flynn and Brothwell in the senior squad just so I have a few more options to play with. So. If I pick our strongest team, let's put Viscozzi in, Darkin at right back, Tor at centre half, Ball at centre half, Bennett at left, uh, left back. Now this is where I get a bit 
dodgy because I don't know whether I want to play with a defensive midfielder or not. I'm tempted to not play with a, a defensive midfielder because we can simply have a deep line playmaker there and we can also have a ball winning midfielder in the centre as well. Um, I like to have defensive wingers because it gives you the best of both worlds in, in terms of attack and also tracking back. Um, the only thing is, with regards to this team, we don't have that many players who can play um, def as a defensive winger, perhaps without the, with the exception of Billy Bennett and Josh Thornton, um, and possibly Marco Bailey as well. But um, really, I, that is going to be something I'm going to need to sign players for. As you can see, we don't have many strikers, and we could probably do with a few more central midfielders as well. So we should be okay with sorting some bits and pieces out there. For now, though, we'll put Ben Flynn on the right. We'll put Willems on the left. We'll put Trokey as a deep line playmaker, and we'll have Danny Elliott as a ball winning midfielder up front. Sadly, we don't have um, Aaron Hooten, who is probably our star striker. Um, towards the end of the season. He really did come in and shine. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing him next season and hopefully we can really kick on with him leading the line. Um, but apart from that, I need, I need to sign a striker. Ruben isn't exactly brilliant on here. He's versatile, but certainly not what I'm going to be looking for. So let's put him on the transfer list, shall we? But uh, uh, anyway... Um, I think I'll cut this video short now, simply because this is a start. Um, I'm not going to sit here and bore you with all the different bits and pieces I'm going to do. I was, as I said uh, earlier on, I did say let's do some tactics, but I'm going to give myself a bit of consideration on that one. I'm going to see what players I can sign. I'm going to try and fit them into a system which suits them. Um, and I don't really want to be sitting there for hours and hours while I trawl through lists of players. So uh, hopefully you found this somewhat interesting. Um, I will be continuing with this one because the thing is with me and Football Manager for 2014 um, I don't seem to keep to a save because I get really pissed off when I do shit. Um, I will try my very best to stick with this. Hopefully it'll be interesting and hopefully I can get some success um, with Carlton Town. So, thank you very much for watching. I'll leave it with you to see if you'd like to come back. Hopefully you will. Um, and yeah, thank you very much.